What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. And you know, I remember when I did HSC Maths, it was a real struggle for me. And you know, it can be sometimes one of those subjects where if you start falling behind and screwing up one assessment, because they all build on each other, you can start feeling like the entire subject is just an absolute train wreck and you wanna drop, quit, give up. But it doesn't have to be this way, and today I'm going to be chatting with Ashim, a student who at the end of year 11 scored 35% in his end of year 11 exams for advanced maths. But yet, by the end of year 12, in his overall result for the HSC scored 85%, which was a staggering 50% turnaround. And Ashim's story is really a, a story of, you know, it's possible, first of all, to actually turn things around for maths and it's never too late. So we're gonna find out from Ashim exactly what he did to turn it around, so that if you're in a similar boat, you can also turn things around for yourself. So welcome, Ashim. Thanks for having me. Now, um, what happened here? Like, end of year 11 exam, I mean, you know, 35%, not amazing. What do you think went wrong? I wasn't really paying attention to maths. I didn't have a general interest in it, but, like, I was just hoping that I could just wing it, hope just get the best I could. But then after I got that final result, it finally hit me. And I got a letter sent home saying, we advise you to drop down. And it was just like, like a big train hitting me. And I really had to change things around if I just wanted to keep, if I wanted to get into the degree that I wanted to. So let's highlight that. You, you needed to keep advanced maths because you were wanting to go to Sydney University. Um, they have a maths requirement, painfully. What's the degree that you wanted to study? Bachelor of Science. And so you needed to get, what, a Ben 4 in advanced maths, is that correct? 4 was, yeah. So you're at a, at a 35 and you're looking down the gauntlet of, I've got to keep this if I want to study my gold degree and I've got to get 70%. I've got to get a 35, I've got to double my mark, in essence. Were you worried? I was very worried and it was just, frantically just trying to see because I didn't know any year 11 maths basically so I had to catch up on year 11 maths and try to be ready for year 12 maths. Wow so um, which yeah I think is a huge challenge because that's the, the big problem with maths in the sense that it builds right so year 11 while technically is never examinable with maths it's one of those things where if you don't know year 11 year 12 is going to be really hard. Yeah. So you now just to highlight here end of the journey you you get 85, so you go well past the, the 70 Ben 4 cutoff. Um, and what are you studying at university? I'm studying Bachelor of Science, majoring in Chemistry and Physics right. at Sydney Uni. So I, I think the amazing thing here is end of the journey, you get there, right? You get the marks, you get into the degree, but end of year 11, that looks quite unlikely. So now, what do you do to turn things around? Because you know, you, you've got a 50% turnaround here across the course of a 12 month period. What was step one? Step one was uh, finding a tutor. I realized I needed help and so did my parents. So, and this was close by to where we lived. So we came here, you had an interview with us and you recommended, uh, you told us a few things and we really liked it. So we decided to join. And after getting used to the tutor, Tom, uh, we just, everything sort of just worked. <laughs> he explained things nicely and yeah. So, so that's right, so I remember we, we had a conversation and it was really about exactly as you highlighted, how do we consolidate or fix the gap from year 11 at the same time as simultaneously trying to move forward, right, for maths. And so you joined uh, one of our advanced maths classes led by Tom, um, who's an amazing teacher. Um, so that was step one, it was like recognising that you needed help. Um, what was step two? Putting in the work, that was... That was step two for me. It was doing math exercises, doing practice papers, like most of my free time, and it was putting math above where, where I already had put it, which was basically on the ground, and actually looking at maths and saying, I need this, so I need to work hard at it. So if we dig in a step two a little bit more, because there's probably a bunch of mini steps <laughs> in step two. Um, you've got putting in the work. Right, and the, clearly the motivation is there because you've had that, that wake up call that if you don't do the work, Sydney Uni is not, not happening, right? So week to week, uh, how many hours do you start putting in for maths? Oh, I stepped it up with uh, nearly an hour or two of maths every day for 
yeah, just for maths. And that's not just in the lead up to an exam, that's just, just throughout the term? Throughout the term, yeah. Wow, so an hour or two, what were you doing? Were you doing practice questions from your, you know, your textbooks? Like, what did that study look Basically like? Basically a mix of all things. If it, were cl if it was close to exams, I'd be doing more practice papers. If it was uh, like just at the start of the term, I would be doing or trying to catch up on work that I missed on year 11, or I would be just doing stuff from the textbook and doing some extra stuff just to help me with it. So it was basically just getting the homework done, getting the textbook questions done, finding extra questions. It was question exposure, yeah. really in a, in, a, in a big way. So you're getting this question exposure. You know, the big question that I'm feeling in all of this is one or two hours of maths is, is, a, is a lot, right, per day. Um, how did you have time to do anything else? Basically, <laughs> didn't. <laughs> I put maths at the top of it and put maths and English at the top and put rest of everything I did like 30 minutes a day and it all depended on schedule. So they became your two top priorities, English because it's compulsory, maths because you're screwed in terms of your choice university degree if you don't do it. Yeah. So it does sound like what you needed to do was reprioritize and make some time sacrifices yeah. for some of your other subjects. So, you know, you're having this approach, you're doing uh, questions each week and you're, you're drawing from a whole range of different you know, sort of places. Um, how did that change then in, in, in the lead up to one of your assessments? So you start getting an assessment, let's say it's week seven or eight in the term. What, what were you doing prior to prep for that? I'll be doing a lot of practice papers. So either from school or THSC. And <laughs> Gotta love it, shout out to THSC. <laughs> Just uh, go there, start doing trial papers of a bunch of different schools and just keep practicing because I used to make a lot of silly mistakes. So every time I practice, I mark myself at the end of it, see how many mistakes I made and just kept redoing it. And, and so you'd redo the mistakes, is that correct? Yeah, until I know where I made the mistakes, why I made it and if, and if I do a new paper, if I make it again, then that's a problem, but yeah. So I want to highlight that because I think there's some really good insights in, in what you've just shared, right? Uh, what I'm hearing is number one, you were doing past papers. Number two, were they timed? Yes. So they were timed. So you were recreating exam conditions. So it wasn't just an equation of doing questions and getting pattern recognition, which is a big part of what you were doing. It's also a building exam technique. And the thing that I love here is that you marked every paper. So it was never like you did a paper, we're like, cool, done. It was you always marked it and then systematically use that to go, what do I need to do differently? Um, so how many past papers do you think you were typically doing in the lead up to an assessment or exam? By the end of uh, my HSC thing, I looked at my computer, I had 75 papers downloaded and it was a lot, but it paid off. So before like term one exams or term two exams, I was doing around like five papers, like just before the lead up to it and before trials and HSC, I just stepped it up and nearly every, every day or every two days I was doing a paper. Wow. So. I mean, 75 on your laptop, you might not have done all 75, but even then, right, it sounds like the, the volume of what you did was significant. So it really goes to show that the journey from going from 35 to 85 wasn't, it wasn't clicking your fingers. There was a lot of hard work yeah. that clearly happens. I think a, a lesson here for anyone is you've got to put the work in. Math doesn't change overnight. Um, what I want to ask you is how did you deal with the fact that you needed to go back and sort out year 11 material? I basically... I made some time sacrifices. I had to, I knew I had to learn the material because year 12 stuff wouldn't make sense to me if I hadn't done that. And it was, my teachers were very supportive as well. Tom was also uh, just helping out. So I just needed to, well, like around an hour before, once I, before I learned the year 11 material, I used to spend around an hour a day just doing year 11 stuff when I was in year 12. Wow, so you needed to make, out of that one to two hours a day that you were sharing that you were doing, initially, it sounds like at least for term four, what I'm hearing is that half of that time was actually being spent going and fixing stuff from year 11. Wow. So now, um, you mentioned Tom a couple of times in the classes here. How did they help? You know, how did getting support in a class at Art of Smart make a difference for you? Like, it was very supportive. It, was, it wasn't like... Uh when you didn't know stuff, you were scared to ask. It was, it was just very open, good environment. And it was like a lot of skill levels, doesn't matter if you're top of your class or 
you're failing like me, like you could still come here and get the support that you needed and it did work at the end. What you know, final advice would you have for students that are struggling with maths? You know, maybe they're like you, they're at the end of year 11, looking down the barrel of a, a scary result. What uh, final tips, suggestions, advice would you have for them? Uh, don't drop maths. Continue doing it. It is a great subject once you learn it. And put in the time and hard work is what gets you there at the end. Awesome. So there you've heard it, guys. I mean, there's ultimately no shortcuts. But I think what a shim story really shows is that with hard, consistent, dedicated work and some support, it is possible to turn things around. It turns something from a 35 to an 85 and to actually enable you to get into that course that you might want to do at university. So if you have any questions about, you know, how do you study for maths and how do you turn things around, leave it in the comments below. One of our team will get back to you. We'd love to help you. If you need further help, uh, you know, get in touch with our team. We've got an incredible team of teachers, tutors, and mentors that can support you and work with you as well, just like we have done with Ashim. And finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We bring videos every single week. So we will see you next week. Bye.